Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany from Mayina Temple. In this video, I'm sharing with you my experience with Mentis Being as a spiritual healer and channeler. If you want to learn more about Mentis Being, stay tuned to this video. So to begin with, how did I come across Mentis Being? To be honest, in the beginning of my journey, I wasn't actively seeking um, ET energies or tapping into ET or our galactic family. I started out connecting to Ascendant Master frequencies as first, such as Jesus Christ, Kuan Yin, or Buddha. And as my journey slowly started to expand, the more I tap into my Akashic records, the more I tap into my past life, my future lives, it is then that I slowly started to go from the earth energy, ascended master energy, the angelic energy into the galactic energy. It was uh, something that just came through to me. And one of my spirit guide is a mentis being. It is a guy that I work really close with. His name is Kahal, and he is um, he usually comes through in a holographic form or energetic form. When he appears to me, he is usually blue in color, and around his auric field, I see the spectrum of light just glowing and radiating out of his energetic body. It's a very beautiful sight when I do see him come forth as an energetic form. Um, mentis being, usually when we say mentis being, uh, it might elicit fear in a lot of people because one, mentis being, let's be honest, their appearance are very different from us and it can cause some fear uh, or hesitation within us. And number two, mentis being in the lower aspects can often be associated with DNA experiments or abductions. So it's not something that's super pleasant that we associate them with. And we also see them in their lower perspective working with the Zetas a lot in regards to these um, DNA experiments. And so together, all of these um, uh, existing belief can cause that inhibition within us. Right? Uh, what I am challenging you guys is to, you know, if you were to zoom out of Earth and think of yourself as a ET and an ET looking down on Earth, depending on where on Earth you zoom into and which individual you zoom into, you can come to a conclusion that humans can be good or humans can be bad. Very similar to these beings as well. Not all reptilians are bad. Not all mantis beings are bad. In their lower uh, lower uh, aspects, yes, they are service to self. They're learning and they have their shadows and they have their own uh, life journey to go through in order to reach ascension. Just like uh, these beings as well, we go through the same thing. So I don't think that we should be stereotyp uh, stereotyping <laughs> ET beings as a result because each of them is different and each of them, depending on the timeline that you tap into, have very different energies. So with my mentis guy, he is multidimensional. He traverses across time and space. And it is not uncommon for galactic guides to be able to traverse time and space, just like angels as well. They are not confined with um, the concept of time and space. And so um, with Kahal, he is very interesting. He, If you've seen one of my previous videos, The Seven Archetypes of Spirit Guides, he works so closely with me that his role overlaps in a lot of these archetypes. Number one, he's a teacher. He has taught me a lot throughout my journey. And most importantly, one of the biggest things that he has helped me with is owning that channeler aspect that was in me, the gift in me that I wasn't tapping into. So he helped me out a lot with that, how to become a channeler, and how to discern energies, and how to trust myself to become a channeler. And also as a healer as well. He's also my healing guide. During uh, sessions with certain people, or uh, for myself, as I guided to, I'll ask him to come and assist during DNA activations or light body activations. 
um, also he's a joy guy as well the reason being he cheers me up when I am having a tough time in our human perspective he comes in and he makes jokes and he's very hu humorous and he makes me laugh and so this is also a common trait that I've noticed in a lot of mantis guide as well like in the higher ascended perspective they know that when we're not used to their appearance we have this fear and we have this resistance in fully connecting with them and so when you're ready to expand yourself to that level to tap into a mantis being guide they will break the ice with a sense of humor and if you've been to some of my past channeling events if you follow me through my channeling events you notice that he always makes jokes during the channel channeling uh, sessions so that's one of the traits that i've noticed with mantis being guides Mantis beings are also very associated with the mind. So one of the ascension journey is to learn to understand the mind and how universal or cosmic law works in this universe. Whereas uh, reptilian beings are more based on the physical of the physicality of uh, their being. Mammalian humanoids, we are more focused on the emotions and the feeling parts of our system. So you can see that, you know, it gives you an insight of why you will choose to be a certain being at different lifetimes to learn different skills and lesson as a soul. So mentors being also provide us with a lot of wisdom. They share a lot with the insights. They are very good at leading and managing. They are very good at looking out in the big picture and in the ascended form, really understanding how the mind works and how us more emotional based beings look at the universe. So as an empath and highly sensitive person, my mantis guide really helps me balance that aspect of me so that I'm not too emotional and get too attached to my emotions and get pulled down as a result and don't know what to do with it. He comes in and brings forth a lot of insightful information based more on the mind, more on the conscious side, how to look at emotions in the broad perspective. Kahal is also um, tele telepathic, so a lot of these beings are communicating through telepathy and they're also very psychic as well. So in the beginning, when I first tapped, tapped into his existence, we were majorly just communicating through telepathy, it's a thought back and forth. And eventually to now, I'm able to channel him um, how do I say directly? So I'm able to step aside my human consciousness, allowing him to take more of my physical vessel and speak through as Kahal himself to share information. A lot of channelers are able to do that. Um, Brad Johnson is able to tap into Andronus, a Syrian guide, uh, Cryon and Lee Carroll as well. We are able to step aside as the human and allow higher frequencies, energies to come forward and speak. I find that mentis beings at their ascended level are also travelers. They like to, they still keep in contact with their fellow beings, but they are more meshed into the intergalacticness of this universe. I will see them working really closely with uh, lion beings or uh, tall greys. Um, they are really everywhere in the universe. Mantis being is very ancient. They have been here for a very long time. Insectoid beings are have been here for a very, very long time. So you will be uh, able to find the existence in a lot of corners and different solar system in the universe. Um, just have my notes here. I'm just going through some of the things. So before this video, I asked Kahal, is there anything that you want me to share uh, to the people that are watching this video? Anything else that they that you want them to know about the mantis beings? And he said that mantis being on the lower perspective, their shadows because uh, the shadow side is that because they are so driven by knowledge and understanding in their lower perspective, it may seem to us as though they are only service to self. 
as a result of this curiosity, this desperation of knowing and understanding these universes, knowing how things work, knowing how DNA works. And as a result, they can come across as cold and also um, sometimes they can neglect the fact that other beings are sentient and they have feelings and emotions and beings like us can be very sensitive, much more sensitive to our experiences than them. And so that is the shadow side of uh, mantis being that they have to work through in order to become the ascended form of mantis beings. And I remember Kahal sharing with me that in one of his lower perspective, as a lower perspective mantis being, he started to have a lot of anger and resentment upon knowing that his psychic ability was drastically um, lowered and he had to learn all these lessons, learning how to understand this thing called emotions. Intel intellect and logic comes very easily for mantis being, but on the other side, the more emotional based experience, it's almost new to mantis being. So that's part of his journey that he has to go through in order to become ascended. I also find that a lot of uh, mantis guides associate with the sound k or k. A lot of the guide's name will have a K in it. So myself, for example, my guide is Kahal. If you know some of the other channelers, uh, Elizabeth April, for example, also a very uh, powerful channeler in the GTA community, her mantis being guide is called Khan. And I also came across someone else who's also a channeler. Her mantis being guide is called Kismet. So it seems like a lot of them, their language has a lot of key sound in it, a lot of clicking sound in it. I'm um, just looking at my notes, and I think that's all I have to share in regards to Mantis being today. So let me know how your experience is with the Mantis Guide, and if you have a Mantis Guide, what is their name, and how do they help you along your journey? I would love to know more. And this is the whole purpose of us sharing this galactic information is together, we can piece together a bigger picture. If we all just come together and put forth all the information that we have gathered, we can get the bigger story and bigger picture and allowing us to merge deeper into the intergalactic existence of humanity. Thank you for tuning in with me today. Namaste.